What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Fortnite for the best FPS while still keeping it looking really good. This video will specifically focus on non-competitive game modes like LEGO Fortnite, but I'll go through pretty much all the in-game graphics options so you can improve your FPS no matter what you play. That being said, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. So with that further ado, let's hop in game and optimize. In game, we'll hit escape or back and head across to the settings in the bottom right, then settings up here. The only time we really worry about here is video. At the very top, window mode should definitely be set to full screen for the best, most consistent performance. However, I'm recording on an ultra wide that I've cranked down to just a normal 16 by nine. And as we can only choose out native resolution here, I need to record at windowed full screen. You can expect an even bigger boost by setting this to full screen in both stability and frames. Then resolution should definitely match or at least be a compatible resolution for your display. If you're playing on a 4K monitor, play at 4K, 2K, 2K, etc. This should be the absolute last option that you lower as other options further down can accomplish a similar thing without pushing out a blurry image or pixels you don't see. Then vSync should definitely be set to off and yes you're getting screen tearing with the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. Frame rate limit should definitely be set to unlimited especially if you're benchmarking your in-game frames. If you find that you're struggling to record or use other programs in the background choose a frame rate limit that's slightly below the frame rate you're getting in game. Say you're getting 180 cap it to 165. If you're getting 160 cap it to 140 just to allow a small bit of power of of your system to remain for background programs such as OBS Studio for recording or streaming. But for most people, set this to unlimited and move on. Rendering mode, we'll get back here in a bit. DirectX 12 looks the best and unlocks features like ray tracing, but you'll get a huge performance boost setting it to DirectX 11 or even performance if you'd like to lose a ton of options and make it look a lot worse. Essentially, DirectX 12 has RTX and stuff like that. DirectX 11 looks pretty good and is usually the default, but performance of him is specifically for competitive gameplay like Battle Royale to give you that competitive edge, but the game won't look anywhere near as good. We'll start on DirectX 12 as it has the most graphics options, though just keep in mind, later we will be going to DirectX 11 for a huge boost. Scrolling down, graphics, most of these are your preference and don't really have that much of an effect on gameplay. However, motion blur should definitely be set to off if you'd like a competitive edge as you can more quickly and accurately spin and snap around and it should be set to off if you're someone who struggles with motion sickness. Then scrolling down, graphics quality. I'd recommend you click auto set or set a preset yourself and either work your way down or work your way up. For me, I've let it auto set, it chose epic as I have a high powered system. You can click open website here to get an in-depth article about the graphics changes in 5.1 including nanite lumen etc and scrolling further down a breakdown of most of the graphics options if you'd like to do some reading yourself that being said we'll cover most of it in this video anti-aliasing and super resolution essentially you can render the game in a smaller window and use ai magic to upscale it if you have an nvidia graphics card you'll get the dlss option here as well the more to the performance side compared to quality side you set this the lower your game resolution will be and the more frames you'll gain, but you'll notice some weird graphic artifacts and glitches appearing. What I'd recommend you do is if you choose DLSS, choose quality here. Otherwise, if you're using TSR, which is the built-in Unreal Engine upscaler, set it to high and leave your temporal super resolution set to quality here. This will give you a good compromise between weird artifacts that could happen and performance. You can raise this up to epic for a better looking upscale using better higher quality AI essentially, but it will come with a performance cost. So high or medium is pretty good here. I'll leave it at high for fewer graphic artifacts and glitches and TSR at quality for a big boost in performance. This, these two are options you can play around with later to get better performance. The other options here are TAA and FXAA, which aren't really anything fancy. There's no upscaling, they're just for clearing up rough edges and sides. Then off is just playing at native resolution. So either DLSS quality or TSR high or medium set to quality as well. Dynamic 3D resolution is an option you can set to on when you have a capped frame rate or 
rate, target frame rate, all the way up at the very top here. Essentially, if you set this to maybe 120 and you're getting an average of 80 FPS in game, if you have dynamic 3D resolution enabled, it'll lower the quality automatically and use more AI magic to upscale to get you closer to that target resolution. For the most part, I'll be leaving this off as we've manually set quality here and we've uncapped our frame rate. Nanite virtualized geometry will give you better quality objects when they're closer to you and gradually change the quality as they get further into the distance. If you disable this, it'll be more sharp popping between low and high quality, but you should see a small performance increase. Virtual Shadows has a huge cost between Epic and Off. There's about a 50% performance loss on most systems if you leave this on Epic, but you'll see Shadows have a huge quality increase with the higher end of this here compared to Off. We'll get there later in the in-game benchmark. Global Illumination and Reflections both have Lumen options, which are ray traced settings that will use a lot more computer power to make a much better looking image. I'd recommend you set this to just ambient occlusion and screen space to get the best performance while still keeping the game looking pretty good. Once again, we'll test these in the benchmark in just a bit. View distance, I'd leave at epic or at least far. Textures shouldn't have too much of an impact if you're running a computer with lots of VRAM. If you have a graphics card with two gigs of VRAM, set this to low, four gigs, medium, six gigs high, and anything above this, epic. Effects and post-processing don't have a huge impact on in-game performance, so you can leave these at epic or high and just forget about them. Effects, however, may cause you to have frame rate drops when there's lots of explosions and things like that. So if you find that you're losing performance in gunfights in Battle Royale, for example, this is an option you should come back and lower. Finally, hardware ray tracing, I'd just recommend leaving this off unless you like to play around with how pretty Lumen can look. This does come with a huge performance cost though, so for now, I'll just leave it off. Advanced graphics, show FPS, set this to on, so you can see your frame rate in game, unless you have a different frame rate overlay that you'd like to display instead, so just my one here. Though, if you have it enabled, it'll be nice and small and in the corner somewhere up here. Then, NVIDIA Reflex low latency, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I definitely recommend setting this to on. If you find that you open up Task Manager and your CPU is way up at 100%, set this to on plus boost instead as your CPU limited and you'll get a better latency boost when you're using boost here. For most people though, on should be pretty good if you have a powerful system. That's it. Apply your settings here and you'll likely be asked to restart your game. I'll do that now. We'll hop back into game with our optimized settings and as I'm going to be showing you a more scenic game mode like Lego Fortnite, quality, lighting, etc. is something you'll usually want to look better over raw frame rate. If you're playing Battle Royale instead, you'll obviously want better input latency and and frame rates, so you'll usually be cranking more of your options down for a better feeling game. But we'll get there in a bit. There we go. We're back in game, starving though for some reason. But you can see how things look, enabling an FPS overlay, looking at our base with good lighting and things like that. There's quite a bit going on, and we're sitting at a solid 53-ish FPS when optimized. If we head across to a more open area and look over maybe somewhere here, we're getting 70-ish FPS, which is pretty good. Remember, this is 2K, so more than 1080p, and we have have our settings pushed relatively high for what it is. From 54 FPS, let's instead open settings and change our global illumination and reflections to lumen for a much better looking game. You'll see that if we head back, our frames drop to 40, but things change quite a bit. It does look really good. Otherwise, if you're someone who doesn't notice any change, you're not really going to miss these ray tracing options anyways. Setting global illumination and reflections to off, you'll notice a huge drop in quality and our frames set at around 54. Four-ish. With them back on, a ton of quality comes back and there's practically no performance hit at all. So ambient occlusion and screen space are good options for these too. If we go ahead and lower effects and post-processing, you'll notice pretty much no change as there's not much going on at the moment. Virtual shadows, I'll disable these. You'll see a complete disappearance of all shadows, but we've got a huge boost up to 76 FPS. Setting it to the lowest option, medium, at least shadows come back and we're down to a solid 60. However, remember we're playing in DirectX 12 mode. What we can do is pause the game, head into settings and change from DirectX 12 to 11. We'll lose a huge amount of options, especially ray tracing specific ones, but you'll see a massive increase in performance. One restart later, we're back in game 
And you can already see there's a huge change in performance with practically no visual cost at all. We're sitting at a solid 120 FPS, 130 even, that's massive. And to be honest, there's not much of a change. In fact, shadows are a little bit less flashy and weird. It actually looks better in DirectX 11 than 12. Checking our options, you'll see a few things have disappeared, such as the Lumen options, which we're ray tracing, Nanite over here as well, and dynamic 3D render resolution. The rest of these options are still pretty much as is, being these ones here. Now, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and try running the game in performance mode, where you'll see an even bigger improvement in performance, but an even bigger loss in graphic quality. We'll apply and restart. You can already see a huge drop in quality, but frames will be through the roof. Obviously, this is more designed for competitive battle royale players, etc. Let's just see what it does to the game for fun. Yeah, no question about it, almost 300 frames a second, but all mentions of grass is gone, and the aliasing is definitely not working pretty much at all, and shadows are gone too, lighting is completely gone, this game is optimized purely for super low-end systems and a crazy competitive advantage in online gameplay. There's almost no stutter to speak of spinning around, but of course, this definitely isn't an optimal experience for playing a more scenic looking game. Anyways, as for options, we've lost pretty much everything. We've only a handful of options to choose from. I don't know why this is still here if we can't even use it, but anyways, there's basically three options here we can play with and 3D resolution to maybe get rid of some of those aliased corners and things like that. This game is optimized purely for competitive gameplay. DirectX 11 is definitely what I'd recommend. It looks great, it feels great, and it's more than good enough for especially more scenic games. DirectX 12 is cool and all, but the performance boost you get just by using DirectX 11 is definitely more than worth it. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!